Hi, in today's video we are going to talk about Zavor Michael. Zavor Michael is this little robotic arm. He is supposed to be a super simple robotic arm so everybody can build it and everything you need to build it is open on GitHub and there is some additional documentation to find somewhere on the internet. I'm gonna post some links down in the description and today I'm gonna show you how I designed this guy, how you can assemble him and I'm gonna talk a little bit on the electronics. And that's it, stay tuned and we are gonna jump right in. Let's start with a super complex design process. For that we'll just need a pen and a paper, it's gonna be awesome. At first we need some kind of base and the robot arm should be able to rotate around the z-axis. So this base should be able to rotate around the z-axis. Next up, we add an arm element. This arm element should be able to rotate around the y-axis. So it's doing this movement. This would be a very simple setup and it actually wouldn't be able to do anything useful. So let's add another arm element on top of this, which will also be able to rotate around the y-axis. And finally, we add a couple more of these arm elements. So we have a great robot. For the mechanical structure of the robo arm, we just need a couple of 3D printed parts. This big part is the base. This will hold the whole arm. This little guy connects to the first servo and rotates around the z-axis. On top of that, we connect a couple of these standard arm elements. The structure of the arm depends on the servos. We will need five of them. In addition, we need some screws and cables. These ship with the servos. The assembly of the arm is super simple. We start by screwing the connector element to one of the servos. Make sure not to over tighten it, we screw into plastic, that could go wrong. We then need to attach cables to the servo before we attach it to the base. Then we can just push it into the base. Now it's time to assemble the arm elements. We start by screwing a printed part onto the motor. I'm gonna use only two screws because I'm lazy. Of course we need to repeat this for the other elements. All done, let's move on. The final step is assembling the arm elements on top of each other. It is as simple as it sounds. I will again use only two screws. Two screws should be fine for the test setup. Remember, we are screwing into plastic here, so we shouldn't over tighten the screws. I'm gonna hit the fast forward button for the next element so you don't get too bored. Finally, this is the last screw. Now we have all elements in place and we can start playing with the arm. Let's add some wiring for this little guy. We have these two cables coming from the servo. They are connected internally, so it doesn't matter which one we use to connect to the next servo. I'm just gonna grab this one and connect it to the next servo. These servos communicate over serial and are all hooked to the same bus. This means we can connect them all in series, which is pretty cool because we don't have to worry about cable management afterwards. This also means there's no input and output, you can just connect it to whatever connector you want. You could even go crazy and connect them crisscross, cause at the end they all have their own ID, so they'll know when they have to do stuff. But for the sake of not getting any knots into the cables when I'm using the robot, I decided to connect them one after another. So that's it, it's all wired up nice and clean. Now there's only one part missing, but it's a very 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 important part. It gives him soul and life, it's the googly eye.
This is awesome. Now he really looks like something. So let's see what else we need on the electronics side. We will use an Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010. We use it because it's a perfect fit for the Dynamixel Arduino MKR shield by RobotIS. The shield is designed to supply the servos with power and the data line and it's a perfect fit for MKR form factor boards. We need to attach a 5V power supply to the green connector. We also have to take care of this little jumper. We have to put it in this position so we use the power input from the green connector and not from the USB port because the USB power would be a little bit too little for 5 servos. In addition to the Arduino we will need a device that can run Python and has a serial port. I decided to use a Pi because it's always good to have a Pi in a project. Now we can just use a USB cable to connect them both. This way they can talk over serial. Question might be why do they talk over serial? The reason is pretty simple. We have this Arduino and RobotIS offers a library for the servers and that's pretty easy to use. But we want to do some more stuff than just moving the servers. We want to add some inverse kinematics, maybe some computer vision and for that we will use the Pi. And to make it easier for us we just will use a little thin layer on top of the Arduino library from RobotIS to offer a serial interface and then we will uh, talk from the Pi to the Arduino over this serial interface. This way we can let all the magic happen on the Pi and just use a simple interface to talk to the servers. Of course we need some power for the project. I will use this old ATX power supply. It is modified and I can use the 5 volt lines from it. If you decide to build a robot arm like this, I'd suggest just buy a decent power supply unit. It should be able to deliver some power though, because each servo can pull I think around 1.5 amps, so with 5 servos we in total need a lot of power for this little arm. Now some fast forwarded wiring and we are all set. Although everything would work now, it's a good idea to clamp the robo arm onto the table. Because there are some forces going around and if you don't want him to fly around, just clamp him on the table. I'm using two of these 3D printed G clamps from Thingiverse. These work just fine and they make sure that my arm will stay where he is supposed to stay. So now he can toss his head around and we're all good. So I think that's all I had to say about the hardware of Servo Michael. I think he came out pretty cool. I think he's a cool guy. And uh, he is now a 5 degree of freedom robot. So one about the, around the Z axis and four around the Y axis. And it is quite a simple setup. But it's yet complex enough to have a lot of fun with it. For further tasks. And I think I'm going to do some stuff with it. And I would be very happy if some of you actually built one of these guys. So everything you need is online. I put all the links down in the description. So feel free to build it. And of course, let me know if you built one. It would be awesome for me to see some builds of him. And um, what else to say? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And give me a thumbs up. Let a comment there. And one more thing. I will probably add some more videos about Servo Michael. I will show you how to use it, how to use the software and how you can put in features and stuff like that. But I'll probably only do that if I actually get some views and some engagement on this video. So yeah, thumbs up, subscribe and see you in the next video.